It is the Riot Podcast. Welcome to the Thursday, June 22nd show. I'll tell you, I want to make you a winner today. I want you to feel like a winner. So check this out. Go to RadioU.com slash win, or you can text the word win to 8772-RADIO-U. Why should you do that? Because if you do it, you have the chance to win an Igloo Cool Tunes boombox cooler. Which is essentially a cooler speaker. It, it, and not just a, a speaker that is cooler than other speakers. It is literally a speaker and a cooler all in one. It's a good old two for one. It's like Nene told me, Nene from uh, here at Radio U told me, it's like if a speaker and a cooler had a baby, this is what it would, it would be. And there's so many good things about it. Mm-hmm. The best thing I think is, is that it just keeps your hands more free. It does. It frees you up. It's, it's one less thing to carry. And another reason that I think is great, uh-huh. it's a conversation starter. You take that thing to the pool, uh-huh. the beach, you take that with you, people are going to ask you about it. Yeah. Automatically, they're going to ask you about it. I'll say one of the only drawbacks might be that because it will call so much attention to you and make it very clear you have snacks and drinks in addition to great taste in music for all to hear, that it might, people might come up to you and be like, hey, can you, can you give me one of those, one of those Capri Suns you have? Spare me one if you yeah. get an extra. If Your you have... cooler will be the cooler that everybody's staring at. Yeah. But, I mean, that's a small price to pay being Capri Sun handout guy if you can also be speaker and cooler all in one guy. I mean, it really renders every single speaker and cooler that has ever been made to this point obsolete and inferior. Oh, yeah, because you're getting two for one. How could they ever compete? Why would you have a speaker that isn't also a cooler? Why would you have a cooler that isn't also a speaker when you can have them both? At the same time. And you think about any time that you're using a cooler, it's because you're literally somewhere where you can't have food or drink or you don't have mm-hmm. it. And any time you're there. Where a fridge wouldn't be accessible yeah. or appropriate. And any time you're at a place you have a cooler, you're walking a far distance. You're carrying lots That's of right. things. You're carrying it's chairs. July you're 4th carrying fireworks. Bags. Wherever you're going. You're at the beach. Yeah, you've got your hands full. But if you have... The boombox cooler. Uh huh. Then that's one less thing you have to carry. Two and one. It would have been speaker one hand, cooler the other. Now you've got both in one for your hand. Efficient is so efficient. Yeah. Uh, So here's what you do because we want to help you out here. We're giving this to you for free. I kind of want to buy one after hearing myself talk about it. I kind of want to just take it for myself, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I believe we do have it here in the building, but we're not going to do that. If we are going to get one, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way with with our hard-earned cash. But for you, you could win this amazing speaker, boombox, cooler combo by going to RadioU.com slash win, or you can text the word win to 8772-RADIO-U. What's in the podcast today? Choice champions. That's all you need to know. Worst type of guy. To hang out with. All you need to know. Make sure you text your vote to 8772 Radio U. We'd love to hear from you. And we will catch you tomorrow. See you guys. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. We've got a fight brewing, and this might be a fight that's so good. Everyone wants to watch. You could put the pay-per-view on this. Through the roof. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg might get into fisticuffs. Now we're talking. A UFC-style cage match is brewing between the two of them. Uh, Basically, Elon Musk, of course, CEO of... uh, Is he still the CEO, the owner of of Twitter? He is. Um, He was tweeting out nonsense, kind of just trash-talking... Mark Zuckerberg a little bit. One of, you know, Elon Musk has a lot of Twitter followers. And one of his followers tweeted back, better be careful. I heard he, Mark Zuckerberg, does jujitsu now. And so Elon Musk responded, I'm up for a cage match if he is, LOL. And Mark Zuckerberg tweeted out, Send me location. Now we're talking. Now this yes. is the kind of thing that we've been waiting on. I'm tired of I'm tired of the TikTokers fighting. Uh-huh. I want the Twitter and Instagram CEOs. This is way better. 
This would be so much better, wouldn't it? Like, we're tired of Jake Paul and Logan Paul fighting. Like, those guys are, like, jacked. They're, uh-huh. good, they're good at fighting. Yeah. I want to see two guys that maybe in a past life would be considered kind of nerdish. Uh-huh. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, people that are, like, widely— I mean, yet again, the Paul brothers are widely hated or loved. Yeah. These guys as well, widely hated or loved. And I would pay to see them go at each other. Because not only would it be, I assume, maybe a little bit, it could be embarrassing. I think so. But at the same time, I think this could be a good way to to humble these guys. I mean, they have as much money as they could possibly want mm-hmm. at this point in their life. Like, what else are you doing? You might as well fight yeah. somebody. Has Elon Musk ever been in a fight? If I had to guess, I'd say no. Probably not. I, I, it's hard to picture Elon Musk. It's also hard to picture Mark Zuckerberg getting into a fight, even though he does well-documented no jujitsu now. Do you think that would serve him well against Elon oh, it Musk? Would. He's got to be... I don't know their sizes, but I imagine Mark Zuckerberg being fairly, fairly decently large compared to Elon Musk. See, I'm looking now Mm -hmm. because Mark Zuckerberg has has about 10 years on him. He's 39. Elon Musk, 51. Oh, okay. So Mark Zuckerberg, big advantage already. Huge. Okay. So he's got to be in much better shape. Mark Zuckerberg, five foot seven. Dang. Why did I always think he was tall? Elon Musk. This can't be right, can it? Six foot one? No. It's what it says. It's what it says. Elon mm, Musk. So he's going to have a wingspan advantage as well. Going to have a, a reach. Going to be able to get get some good punches in. Yeah, he's six foot one and a half. Yeah. Where mm. Mark Zuckerberg at five foot seven. But at the same time, Mark's been doing jujitsu. Uh-huh. And when you think about it, because in the beginning, I was kind of... I was kind of laughing at him doing this. Yeah. But you know how much money he has. He probably has the best trainer in the world. He does, yeah. He makes millions of dollars. He has nothing to do all day. Uh-huh. He's probably killing it at jujitsu. He's probably, I mean, he probably knows his way around a, a gym. Like, uh, it wouldn't be like he's think. hiring some random to do it. Yeah. Like, he's probably has, like, the best jujitsu guy that's teaching him jujitsu. So, I'm now I'm wondering, what's Elon's fighting background? Is he more of a karate guy? Like, where are we at here? I need to know something. But six foot one, that's a huge advantage. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Elon Musk definitely a big size advantage. That's not what I was expecting. Um, now, I think the last best question is, especially when you've got two guys that really aren't true fighters, which one between the two of them do you think more likely has like a a monkey mode in them? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like who is going to have that weird fear in their eyes? Uh, they could just go like a baboon on you. I, I mean, if I'm I'm leaning one here, Mark Mark has ten years on him, uh-huh. but for whatever reason, I feel like Elon may have a little bit extra in him. You think so? I think he might. But oh, also no. that 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 whole that jujitsu thing, it's it's carrying me a little bit. Yeah, I, I think know. that could help. I'll tell you the only the only thing that would be bad about if they did actually wind up fighting and we all got to watch it is that one of them would have to win. Yes. Tiger Because then we'd hear about that for a long time. Uh-huh. Like, how long do we let the, the social media CEOs, like, how long do you get to brag about that, yeah. you know? And then who do you fight next after that? Exactly. What's who the do you follow up? that up with? The stories you love with the opinions you hate. The Riot Radio U. Do you have any code words that you use either with your significant other or maybe some friends? That you guys know what they mean, and so you can use them out and about and, uh, like, communicate to each other secretly. See, I feel like, depending on the relationship, you can say so little if you're in the right atmosphere. Uh Look them in the eyes, and they know exactly what you're thinking. Sometimes you don't even need to say it. You can just look at them and know now. So what about you? You got any any words? See, the one thing that— You're willing to divulge? Yeah, I'll I'll divulge one because you'll never know. Uh-huh. Like, none of my friends would ever know, but me and my roommate, Andrew, who I would consider my closest friend, the only person that I'd probably be able to do this with, mm-hmm. he, if we're at, like, a party or we're somewhere where we're in, like, a group atmosphere, we're real quick to dip, real quick to leave, go somewhere else. Yeah. And so our code word, that's all we have to say to say, like, we're ready to go, is if we just lock eye contact and just say, yep. That's it? That's all we need. Lock eye contact, a little head nod, yep. And he'll know because we can feel the vibe of the party. If yeah. it's like dying off, not that much fun, whatever it is. All I need to do is look at him and be like, yep. And he'll say, yep. And then we can just go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. Say your goodbye. You ever had that? Um, you ever do that accidentally? 
Where oh, you, yep. you just said yep naturally and uh this happened last a weekend alarm. last weekend i thought he gave me the signal uh-huh. we were out he hanging out with friends yep. he looks at me and gives me like a little not even the yep he just gives me the head nod uh-huh. and i'm like okay we're leaving so i start saying goodbye to everybody because oh, no. i'm like we're leaving i'm saying goodbye to everybody and i come up to him like you ready to roll and he's like what are you talking about like we're having a good time i was like i was having a good time but i thought you were ready to leave he's like i'm not i was like why'd you say goodbye to everybody and what am I going to do? Hang out here the rest of the night <laughs> yeah. now? Like, how long are we staying? Because now I'm there. Now you have to go. Because I just gave hugs. Like, I gave hugs. It's yeah. not like I can just, like, come back and be like, oh, yeah. That's we're worse. staying now. That's worse than, like, the, you say goodbye and then you see somebody in the parking lot or whatever. Oh, yeah. This is worse. Goodbye. It, and then you stay for half an hour. And then I'm just, like, lingering. Like, yeah. I'm, 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 like, still in on conversations. Like, didn't you just give it's me like, a hug and say, like, you're out of here? Kinda like, it feels like you just wanted attention for yeah, saying, like, saying goodbye. Did you everybody. just want a hug? Yeah. Did you want a hug? Uh, but for me and my relationship, me and my wife, we have two, two code words I can give away. And ours aren't very covert because one, if we're ready to leave somewhere, the same thing in, as, as you, we'll say Gina. But if Gina. we, if we just say Gina, then I guess if other people heard us saying that it would be kind of, you know, like why they just randomly say Gina, but it is kind of a thing where we're like, you know, like we'll, we'll get close together and be like, so Gina. Gina, yeah. what does that even mean? Like, how'd means, you come up with that? Uh, I think that actually is something that her that goes back to it's a code word she had with her mom, I believe, and then it just translated, it con- converted itself onto our relationship. I need to steal that because that's pretty good. Gina, Gina. it sounds like it's time to leave. Like, yeah, Gina. Yep, it's G- yeah, it's the way you say it though. Gina, it so Gina, G- Gina. And then the other one is if we're out and about and there's somebody that just looks wacky and it's like you need to look at this person, pay oh, attention. I love this. Watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah. And then it's an immediate, you, where is he? Yeah. Where is she? Yeah. You do a whole 360 a good, until you see, and you're going to see somebody outrageous. What a great keyword. And we use that a lot. You need that keyword, because when you're out and about, that's like half the fun. Yeah. Especially if you have like a boyfriend or girlfriend, uh-huh. and you're out at restaurants, that's like, if you guys are going out together, at this point, like, what else are you talking about? The best part about going out together is being like, look what's going on over there. Yeah. Like you're just people watching. You go out to eat together. Your people watching, and so you need that word. That's a that's a good one. That's a good yeah, one. without pointing or anything. Watermelon. 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 I if love you, feel that. free to use that. Uh, I'm eight, stealing s- both. Eight seven seven two radio. You. If you got a secret code word you use, uh, we'll get to a few of yours next. If podcast awards were ever a thing, this show wouldn't win any. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. The question is, what's your secret code word you use with your significant other or close friends that uh, that has a secret meaning for Isaiah? You and your best friend will just say, yep, if Head it's time nod. to go. Uh-huh. Yep, time to leave. Me and my wife, we use Gina for that, and we use watermelon when there's somebody, somebody, something, I mean somebody, somebody wild out in public, and you need to call attention to like, hey, babe, you got to look at this, watermelon. I have another one, too. Okay. This is one that goes back to when I was in high school, and this goes off of, and we should start using this here. Okay. This is such a good one, right? And so if you're having a conversation at, uh, at school or if you're, like, at work and the boss comes around and you want to, like, tidy it up, right? Yeah. UFO. Oh, UFO, UFO. Huh? UFO. Yeah, UFO. We used to do it all the time. Yeah. When I was in high school, our, our football coach— when we were like at practice or whatever, we're talking about how bad practice stinks at that time, whatever it is. Coach starts walking up. One person's talking about it. The other person sees coach coming. UFO, you automatically know. Be quiet. Whatever you're saying right now, yeah. someone, import- someone important uh-huh. is coming. Your mom's coming. Your dad's coming. Your boss is coming. Your grandma's coming. Whatever you're talking about that you don't want them to hear automatically ends. UFO. That's a good one. That's a good one. I have Seth here who has his, uh, his code word he'll use with his friends. That means it's time to go. I have a watch. I have a watch? Yeah. Now, that'd be a wild one to bust out, though. That would be. If you're at a party and you just, you're standing in a circle, you know, everybody's chatting it up. Hey, I have a watch. Hey, I've got this watch here. Yeah. Everyone's like, all right. Congratulations on your success. Uh, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> if it works for you, what if you, yeah, what if people start asking questions about the exactly. watch? Exactly. It's like, what's up with the watch, bud? Yeah. You trying to flex it or what's happening there? What about Benny? This is good. This is through text. Benny says for him and his friends, if you text 911 to the group chat, then uh, then they know that you've got a call in five minutes 
and somebody's got to call in five minutes, and then you can pretend you have an emergency. Ooh, get out of a to date. get out of a yeah, to get out of a tough That's spot. That's a good one. Yeah, you text that in the group chat, then somebody's helping you out. Yeah, and then uh, Ellie here. Oh, this is from Seinfeld. Lemon tree means wrap it up. It's time to go. It's time to leave. It's time Stop to leave. what you're doing and get out of here. There's That's a good, good one ones. too. Those are good ones. There's the thing is with these is there's always if you have them they're really useful, and if yeah. you can get them down with your group then they can come in handy many a times. Mm -hmm. And th another one, one that I need, I need this. Okay. I say, I, I guess I don't at this time, but <laughs> when you have a girlfriend, yeah. you call your buddy on the phone and she's like, put it on speaker. Let me hear what you guys are talking about. Mm, yeah. Sometimes your buddy, he's going to open up with a wild line. Off he the might rip, be saying something crazy. And you got to let him know that you're with, with your girlfriend. You got to be like. With your boyfriend, whatever it is. Just uh, You, you got to do something quick. All right. For us, you want a stromboli? You want to show say that means you're going on speaker. And my girl's right next to me. Yeah. Say, oh, Hudson, you want that stromboli? Yeah. What's up, buddy? Uh -huh. hey, actually, you know what? I'm good on the stromboli now. That, you know, it changes the whole conversation. It, it tosses the whole thing through a through a little left curve. But you yeah. got to have that down because sometimes if you don't, you can't be like, I'm with my girl. Yeah. I'm with my girlfriend. Because right. then she's like, why, are you, why, do you have to, why do you have to say why that? Why do you need to disclose that? Why do you need to say that? Would he say something different if you didn't say that? <laughs> and that's an automatic. It's a fight right when you hang up the phone. You got to be careful. You want a stromboli. You're free to use that one as well. I think we're helping people out here. And I, I, I love inside jokes. Oh, I love them. I'd love to be a part of one one oh, day. Oh, wouldn't, wouldn't that be so great, Michael Scott? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi there. The worst of the riot. Crank that up. Radio U. It is time for what I would say for me, I think this is my favorite segment that we do every week. Isaiah, do you think it's yours as well? I love some choice champions. Choice champions. Isaiah and I take turns picking uh, uh, different, we pick teams from a different subject. In this case, this week, the subject is worst types of guy to hang out with. The last guy you want to be with at a party, left alone with, uh -huh. hang out oh, with. Oh, left alone with. But you at the same time. You find yourself with them more than you think you, you just, should. You can't avoid them. Uh, so we're going to do our draft here real quick. We're each going to take three picks, snake draft style. Isaiah gets the first pick because I had the first pick last week. And then you need to text us at 8772 Radio U to decide who has the better, or in this case, who came up with the worst team of guys. All right, Isaiah, kick it off. Going up at number one overall, it'd be a shame if I didn't take know it all guy. Know it all guy. I mean, that is the most widely. Hated guy. The guy that when you go to a party, when you're hanging out with your friends, even like a family member, you say something and they correct you. Yeah. I mean, come Some on. Some people would call him well actually guy. Oh, well actually. Yeah. Well actually, sir. It's actually, actually this. Actually, Pluto's not a planet. Know-it-all guy is that number one, has to be the number one overall pick every time. Nobody wants to be know-it-all guy. If you're a smart guy, that's good. But just don't correct me, please. Please don't correct me. Yeah, uh, it's a solid number one pick. I think, though, my my pick tops that for sure, and that is the anti-everything guy. Ooh, that's a good Just one. Just anything normal you and your buddies are having a conversation about, and he swoops in with, uh, actually, I don't watch basketball. I think they're overpaid. I hate Netflix. Yeah. I've never seen Netflix. I would never, yeah. I'd never I, pay for it. If I can't buy it on DVD, I don't watch it. Anti everything guy's the worst too. That's tough because he just he, he's just a downer. And like any trend that's going on, uh -huh. oh TikTok, I've never, I would never download. Waste so much of my time on that thing, I would uh -huh. never have it. Yeah, I only read books. Anti everything guy's yeah, good. That's a tough one. And here, uh, number two, I uh, uh, made a strong case for being the, my number one pick, and that is too political guy. Ooh, we all know a too political guy. Yeah, and to be clear, this is not a a partisan Republican Democrat. I don't care. Because I don't want to talk about it. I mean, I you have your beliefs. I have mine. I have strong beliefs. I follow politics a lot, but I don't just go bringing them up. I don't just go, oh, I wouldn't go. You go to McDonald's? Don't you know who their CEO voted for? Oh, no. ridiculous. I don't want to know. Why do you have to bring that up here? Even if you're on my side, even if I agree yeah, with everything yeah. you're saying and we're in a group setting, I don't want to talk about it. You could Still be spitting straight facts that I agree with everything. And I don't want to have that conversation around people. Yeah, we're trying to have a it. good time. I'm trying to hang because out, dude. here's the thing with Too Political Guy. He's never, Too Political Guy is never doing it in a fun way. No. It's never like, oh, I love going to that store. Love Dick's Sporting Goods. It's because, always negative. Yeah, they really support whatever. No, it's always a negative thing. My next one, lies too much guy. Oh. 
and it's not even like brutal. The, the worst thing about lies too much guy is he's in your friend group. You know him. Everybody knows he lies too much. And so whenever he says mm -hmm. something that you know is like a lie, then you just make eye contact with everybody else, uh -huh. and you're like, "Come on, man! Like we know yeah. you don't have to front for us. You don't have to be like you don't have to act like you're somebody you're not. We're already your friend." And you're lying to us. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you putting us in this situation? No one's going to call him out either because he's been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. And he's one of your close friends. But at the same time, you're just like, brother, why? Why even say it? We know it's a lie. You've been doing this for so long. Lies too much guy. Not the worst guy, but he's one of those guys in the friend group that you're always going to get an eye roll at least once or twice a night. Yeah. See, I actually think lies too much guy can be a little bit of fun. Oh, you like lie too much I would want to be lie too much guy, but you know he adds a little spice to things sometimes. You look at the rest of the group and you're like, really, man? Yeah. It's like you get to give you, you get a good chuckle at a lie too much guy, but at the same time you're like, what are you doing right now? All right, next pick, your yes. last one. I've got the embarrasser. Mm. Now this is one that I hate. I have a friend like this. No matter where you are, he tries to embarrass you. Uh huh. I could be at the pool and he'll be screaming. My buddy wants to do a cannonball, and I don't want to do a cannonball. <laughs> yeah. It could be anything. We could be talking to talking to girls, make up stories about you, to uh -huh. make you look like a, a total goof. If you say something to him that you wanted to keep between the two of you at a party, and then he's going to scream it out to the room. The embarrasser is one of the hardest people to be around. Yet again, you love them because they're fun, but they're going to make you look like but, a total goof, and yeah, they don't care. Tough to handle. My last pick, I'm going with one-up story guy. We love a good you one up. You tell a story, and he's uh, and he's just got to top it. Every Steal time. Steal your thunder. All right, let's round this up real quick. You have know-it-all guy, uh, lies too much guy, and then the embarrasser. Yes. I have anti-everything guy, too political guy, and the one-up story guy. Whose team would you rather? Would you rather leave and never hang out with again? Which one would you rather avoid? Which one is worse? Radio use worst of the riot podcast. Choice champions, worst type of guy draft. Isaiah, your team is? Know-it-all guy. She sucks. Lies too much guy. Sucks. And your friend that's always on a mission to embarrass you. Mm, that is the worst, isn't it? Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst, but it's not as bad as my team, which is anti-everything guy. And some might accuse me of being that from time to time. But you know what I do? I rein it in. We all have things we hate. But you don't have to let everyone know about it all the time. When someone else, the worst for anti-everything guy is when somebody else is talking about how much they love something. Uh-huh. And then anti-everything guy comes in and goes, you like that? Yeah. You really like that Netflix? restaurant? I would never. Yeah. Been there one time. <laughs> Not again. Not again. I'd never head back. Uh, anti-everything guy. Too political guy. It's very obvious who we that is. We need to say more. And also, I have the one-up your story guy. Hey, I saw a bear uh, from 20 feet away, and we were whitewater rafting. Oh, you did? I went whitewater rafting and got my arm ripped off by a bear. You wouldn't believe. Similar to lies too much, guy. It is. But it's not a patent it's obvious that his stories are lies, but he just always has. Somehow, he always has a better story than you every single time. And so, he can't just let you have just let you have this one. So we have a couple texts in. Uh-huh. D said, I, I, can I go with Hudson Steam? The guys have no redeeming qualities. <laughs> she said, at least the guys on Isaiah's team could be fun to hang out with. Hudson's yeah. team, absolutely not. That's uh, that's what I feel. I mean, two of your guys are pretty bad. Uh, no, you know what? Embarrasser and lies too much. They can add some fun. They they could be a part of your crew, and you might not hate them. Yeah. Like they they could be. They're a part still of your, the worst. There's gonna be some times. I'll tell you this much. There's gonna be some times when the embarrasser, it's one of the worst ones. Uh huh. Because the, the apex of the embarrasser could be worse because then they're they're publicly embarrassing you in front of women, in front of <laughs> random people you don't yeah, know, uh -huh. at a restaurant. Like that's one of the real ones bad where first impressions. A lot of the come other from ones the embarrasser. Oh yeah, a lot of the other ones, it's like they're just annoying for you. Yeah. The embarrasser can be annoying can for it, everybody. Yeah, that's true. Laura uh, said, see you wouldn't want to be uh to Hudson's team. Yeah, my team sucks. It's the worst. Abby said, gotta be Isaiah strictly for know-it-all guy. Yeah, he is tough. It's He's a, tough. It's a, it's a number one pick. The know-it-all guy is hard. I think our top three picks, there's just there's just no way to have a conversation with him. No, you can't. You can't. You just can't have a good time if somebody's going to, well, actually you, or, I mean, that's really what they're doing, whether they're doing it for political things, for know-it-all reasons, 
or just for being the negative negative Ned of the group. They all they all suck. Um, I think I think you know for some of these two, I don't think we all have some of each of them in us, but I think we have a few shades of that. Again, I think anti everything guy. I can be anti everything guy from time to time. But you got to rein it in. You got to know. You got to be self aware, is what you got to be. And everyone can be know it all guy from time to time. Yeah. But you just oh, that's choose the toughest not to. One. I think that's the toughest one for me is not be know it all guy. See, I think I'm good about people will say things that are wrong. Hutchin does this all the time. <laughs> people will say things that are wrong and yeah. I'll just let them think that they're right. Sometimes that can be, that that's one of the best traits in a guy. And I'm letting you- people say wrong things and not getting upset about it and not. Not calling him out. And the worst thing, too, is if you ever try to tell know-it-all guy that he's wrong, there's, there's oh, no you're way. you're in for it. He, I mean, he's going he's gonna to argue until you think he's right. Yeah. He'll convince you of something that you know is wrong. He'll convince you it's right. Yeah, he will. No uh, matter what. Uh, I, once again, as the host, have to declare myself the winner, although I think I did get more <laughs> votes this time. It's... You did get more votes this time. Wasn't that a great Riot clip? While you're here, you should watch more of our videos and subscribe so you don't miss what we do next.